The State Archives collects the history of New South Wales essentially, so what we find here are the government records of New South Wales since the colony began. It's the memory of the state and it's documented and described and analysed and uh, interpreted in this very building. So it's 14 million items, it spans about 85 kilometres. And when I say item, that's an archival item. So an item might be a box like this, and inside that item might be 700 pieces of paper. So it's extensive. Government is always producing records, and we're preserving them, we're keeping them for New South Wales and Australia and the world. So they will always be available to anyone. So anyone off the street can come into our State Archives reading room and request to see records. We're here to serve the public. Well, the State Archives collection belongs to the people and we want as many people as possible to know about it, look at it, access it online, on site and fall in love with it. We want the past to have a living present and a living future. If anyone asks why we document the memory of the state, why we have 85 kilometres worth of State Archives, the Queen's Album is evidence of that because without this collection, without these processes to identify records of enduring value, we would lose this history forever. It's very much cutting edge for the latter part of the 19th century and it's a fabulous collection of photographs. While I was reading historic newspapers, I came across mention of the most beautiful album that was created especially for Queen Victoria, and my curiosity was sparked. If it was that special, why have we not heard about it? Where were the images? Where were the negatives? And where was the album? And that then triggered a whole amazing research project to look into the State Archives collection of 14 million items and to see whether or not in that collection we could uncover the original glass plate negatives. We were able to find beautiful original glass plate negatives that are 140 years old. Images that showed pristine wilderness, incredible public works, new buildings that were constructed at the time including the Australian Museum. These negatives show the colony of New South Wales, as it were at the time, trying to show Britain how sophisticated we were. The album was a show of loyalty to the Queen, but it was also selling New South Wales. It was presenting to Queen Victoria a colony that she had never visited, and it was showcasing what a jewel it was. So in gifting the album to Queen Victoria, New South Wales was making a really clear statement that it had moved on from its past as a penal colony that New South Wales was a really desirable place to encourage people to migrate to New South Wales and boost the population and boost the economy. So these photographs show the really early work of visual communications through photography. So we started sharing and distributing this description of this magnificent album, hoping that someone had it in their collection somewhere. Despite this international and national search, the whereabouts of the album currently are unknown. We are still searching for it and we have invited the public via social media to help us on our quest to locate the album. No one found it under their bed, it hasn't as yet been located in an attic, but we did have people really get engaged in that search. The Government Printing Office um, produced a style guide in 1882 and in the appendix of that volume was the story of the Queen's album. And importantly for us, it provided us with the exact words of the title page. We were able to search for that in the State Library's catalogue and from there discover an album that had a description that almost exactly matched the description we had for the Queen's album. So we travelled into the State Library and it was just this incredible moment to open the lid of the box and to see this volume coming to life. So this unsent album became our visual reference point. 
we took reference images and we were able to cross-reference those against our Sharky register and from there get a box number. So instead of randomly searching through boxes, we now had a targeted pinpoint um, area to go to. And it was incredible to find that over three quarters of the negatives had survived in the State Archives. When they were discovered in the collection last year, it was a moment of enormous pride uh, and joy. Finding this moment from 140 years ago and, and looking at them on the light box was like going back in time. Uh, and it really made us proud to be custodians of this fantastic collection. The glass plates are stored at the moment in a, in a stack. That's not ideal. There might be broken ones, there might be ones with damaged emulsion, there might be um, additions to the plate that the photographer has put on, and all of those things we need to take into consideration before cleaning, um, and then we package it so that it can be moved around the building safely. It goes to our digitisation suite and they then take images either on a scanner or through overhead copying with a light box. There's a huge amount of detail that can be uh, captured because of the size, the physical size of the glass plate. So what we can do, we can go really large with some of the images. We can drill into a whole lot of amazing detail. So there's this great opportunity to rediscover the images through the capabilities of digitisation and the digital realm. The photographer's very first versions of Photoshop, as we would use it now, is to paint chemicals on the negatives to make things brighter and whiter. We see attempts being made to create a sense that the sky was really clear, that waterfalls had this glistening water falling down. Now, the way that those chemicals reacted over time turned that painted on material orange and the decision had to be made, do we keep that in or do we Photoshop it out? And in this case, it's a wonderful part of the history of the negative and it's really worth keeping. Government House Sydney is the perfect spot for the exhibition because if Queen Victoria came here during her lifetime, she would have come to Government House. It's also one of the most beautiful images featured in the album. And tonight, the Queen's Album exhibition is being launched by Her Excellency. So, it's with great pleasure that I declare the Queen's Album officially open. The exhibition reimagines the Queen's album. It reproduces a selection of some of the images which we've created from the original glass plate negatives. It is so amazing to see the original glass plate negatives. It's a fabulous collection of photographs. I find it fascinating to look at buildings and landscapes that are here today and actually look at what they looked like in the 1880s when these were photographed. It really has that sense of progress. It's an advert. I read that Queen Victoria never visited New South Wales at all, so everything she saw in that album would be the truth to her. I think what's missing in this photo album is First Nations people. We don't see many women, if any, posed in those images, and we certainly don't see the urban poor and Indigenous people are absent from the images as well. You know, I think nowadays that would be very, very different. So we create an exhibition and we allow people to curate around it. Individual sites will be able to add photographs in their collections that enhance the exhibition and showcase in their local area. The vision is to get as many stories as we can out there, tell them in a compelling and interesting way.